I have been waiting for this moment for a very long time. We have all been waiting for this event. The stars have aligned and finally we get what we have been praying for. What we truly deserve. I finally got my Drew Black Tarot come through in the post the other day. I'm really happy, so I thought, sod it, ad hoc review. Okay, so first off, I'm going to show you the box itself and how it compares to what I always usually consider the average size. Um, now I usually, now a lot of my decks are the Scarabinos, so I kind of use them as a rough metric. But as you can tell, these are a lot bigger. So I've actually got the tape measure this time. So with the standard the Scarabino, five inches by uh, two and a half to three, uh, near three inches. Whilst this box itself <coughs> is uh, five and a half inches by three and a half inches. Oh, sorry, you can't see that there. My apologies. It's about three and a half inches. And so obviously now with the Le Scarabino, as we usually see, you've got your little book, and this is about the size of the deck itself. Let's take them out of the way. Whilst with the box itself, we'll have a quick look at the design in the box, but the general size of the book is about the same height, but a lot thicker. And the deck themselves, pull them out, deck themselves, as you can see, are about almost twice the thickness of the standard tarot deck. So, getting out the older tape measure again, these are, you can't really see from here, so just about an inch. So, that's just about an inch, whilst can't ask these cards. Put it this way so you're going to see it properly. That's all they stand up on there. Okay, no, they don't. That's a bit of a spoiler there, but we'll hold that for later. But uh, this is about two, almost two inches thick. And these are pretty solid cards. So, there for the timing. Um, so, the box itself, um, it is, you can't, um, you can't, can't really see it there, but got a nice little kind of pattern. Now this pattern is obviously throughout the deck. So you've got it on the sides there and on the back. Now I also want to quickly say that if you are in the UK and ordering these, um, I did have to pick this up from my local um, de uh, my local post depot and had to pay about £17.04 for uh, tax. So you might want to consider that whilst purchasing, but at the same time, these cards, depending on how much you actually earn and stuff, I'd say these cards are kind of worth it. And uh, also, with the box and the inside, the inside there, you might not be able to see it properly, so I shall read it. God be with us. Uh, this own, um, it is only in darkness that we see the stars. And so that's what you've got, got in the lid there. Now when this actually arrived, after I opened the box, it was wrapped in black paper and um, had a nice black bow on it. Um, I did not keep that myself, but um, it's still pretty cool. It was it was a real treat to open, I can tell you. Now, I'm just going to quickly go to the book, which is this way. So, in this, so it, it all has this finish all throughout. As you can see there. Now, I'm not going to go through the entire book, and I'm not going to go through the entire deck. I'm just going to do the selected cards because uh, we're all busy people. So it has a quick detail about the major arcana, and then it pretty much goes straight into the first card, which is the full. But as you can see, it has the it has a four word descriptor of the card itself before going into full detail about the meaning, and then it kind of goes. And then it goes about talks about the additional artwork information, and uh, so that's if you're really wanting to know the finer details with this deck. So we'll move on to 
the uh, major arcana, not through the whole deck, but just through like select ones. Okay, so first up, we're going to look at one of my favourite cards, which is the Fall. And as, now I'm basically treating these as if they're like a museum exhibit because these cards are like really nice quality. And um, as you can see, got a little kind of ch uh, ch uh, small child with a nice glowing butterfly on their forehead with implied angel wings. I've kind of perceived that as angel wings. I've not read the book, but the book is that type where I don't want to open it. That's because the it feels like it will kind of ruin the integrity of the book. It's quite thick. So, but at the top you've got um, lots of doves on the top here and uh, lily pads and flowers at the bottom there. So you can obviously tell they're on a lake. Now, um, now the wording and the font rather at the bottom is kind of into the card itself rather than printed on top. So it has a kind of reverse embossed in Boston stuff on it. I don't actually know what the term is for that, but so the the print is kind of carved into the card and as I said before the, the card thickness is quite thick so but um I said the fall is always one of my favourite cards. Okay so here we have the high priestess and she herself looks really lovely and I like how the, once again, all of this is kind of carved into the card rather than printed on top. So essentially the picture itself is printed on as, as part of the print and all of this kind of blackness here is all kind of embossed into it. So all of this is kind of, as I said before, cut out. So this card is just kind of, I like the silhouette, I kind of like the silhouetted look so there's no actual colour. And usually with the High Priestess you have the Crescent Moon on her head, whilst in this one she's kind of sitting on the Crescent Moon. <clears throat> and uh, she has a pen, uh, pendulum, rather, in one hand and a bottle of something on the other. And the the artwork on this, as I said, is amazing. Like This is going to sound very strange, but the details on the knees look amazing. Kind of like It's artwork that looks like it's been taken as a photo and then kind of photoshopped later. Now this one has a more Lovecraftian feel to it, which I think is really cool. So this is uh, Destiny, which would actually be the um, the wheel. But this one it's Destiny because um, in the same sense that uh, things constantly change and Destiny is the course in which things change. So I like the concept of it being spun. Um, kind of, kind of like... Um, like a tap, like the tap. I can't remember which mythology it is, but they're supposed to. I think it might be Greek. I'm not sure. Where everything is written down in tapestry, and your entire death and your entire life is written down in tapestry as you live it, and you're kind of pre and it's like predetermined, as it were. And I like the um, water and fire symbol on each arm there, and the spinning, creating the story or the universe there. And it's just such an amazing, um, visually gorgeous and just kind of trippy and mind blowing. Just kind of the concept of it. And once again, the detail in the body and the body and stuff is just amazing. Now, next up, we'll be going on to Temperance. And once again, beautiful card. And I find this card quite interesting in the fact that they are just using one other colour. Um, now for a lot of this deck, the deck tends to have a lot of gold, but this is one of the few that has a nice deep red to it, and uh, got to be honest, big fan of redheads. But I also like the concept of the of her holding something red in one hand and her holding white in the other, and her round turning red to kind of show the counterbalance and the opposites, and kind of like a yin yang sort of thing where um, the opposites, now uh, two op two opposing forces have to be in balance for the other one to kind of they both have to exist for the other two for the other one to exist which I really like and I'm always quite fond of angels as well and cards um, unfortunately too many angel card too many oracle cards tend to be angels but this is a uh, once again just like a beautifully designed card and I like the swords on the side the sword on this side here and the flowers on that side there kind of representing uh, war and peace not necessarily the book but the mere concept and I just think it's really cool. 
and once again the emboldened bit here you might not be able to see properly but you've got the implied halo there and the yin yang as a yin yang sign at the top just in case you didn't kind of get it there but it does look really nice I'd have this as a t-shirt or as a poster that'd be good okay now for the last of the majors we're going to look at the moon card now I'm also quite fond of the moon tower card um, I've got it tattooed on my, on my right shoulder and uh, what I like about this one is the fact that first of all it's very minimalist it, the, there's not that much else going on in the picture which is always cool and so they're using the absence of anything else as to kind of highlight just the kind of depth of the artwork. Now, um, I also like the fact that the it's a crescent moon, but on but kind of on its back rather than on the side. Similar to how this is, similar to how this looks with like the high priestess. This is what I'd usually imagine with the high priestess. But once again, as I said, it's the artwork is really nice, and you kind of. None of these feel oppressive. They feel like you can, they don't necessarily feel like you can stare at them and get so many different stories out of them. But it does have that feeling of, you know that if you was to read with these, these would definitely be something you would want. This is definitely something you can go into great detail in in depth when you do tarot readings. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here to show you the aces and one of each court card. Uh, from each set so just so it's a little quicker so we have the eight so basically none of the um, minors are actually named they're all merely numbered and so we'll start with the ace of wands which is to kind of like which is a quill and um, that does have a night once again as I said before, earlier a lot of the minors tend to just have be more gold or a bit of dark orange so this is a kind of what a lot of the miners styled was like, but we'll get into that later. So you've got the Ace of Wands here, kind of showing creativity, not musical notes, but still kind of right, uh, still general writing, and it kind of, uh, kind of highlights the uh, concept and flow of creativity, and the detail on the feathers is lovely. Now, the cups are my favourite suit in this deck because the uh, glass and water just looks just the best. I'm a Pisces myself, so I'm quite a fan of water, and without water, I can't live. But then, you know, that's water for you. Anyway, um, so here we have the Ace of Cups, now kind of spreading, water, uh, pouring water, and giving life at the bottom there. And as I said, most of the um, uh, uh, most of the cups in this deck just look beautiful just because of how the glass and water looks basically and you've got something then you've got uh, the coins so not quite sure what it is at the bottom at the top rather I'm not quite sure what plants they are but um, at the bottom you have uh, a shovel no a shovel you've got a an axe and kind of like a rock hammer sledgehammer so obviously it's about work and the gr not the grift the grind so it's about work and highlighting about working hard to get what you want and kind of and to earn what you need so that does have a good kind of strong uh, kind of working class feel to it and then you've got the ace of swords now not now some of the swords kind of have a bit of fire to them throughout the deck but these do look great basically uh, so there's not a lot more going on here than with some of the others in detail but the idea of kind of that has more of a feeling of a crown to it rather than just a hilt. So uh, it might be for um, for kind of like highlighting that this um, that there is a purpose behind the sword. So it's not just being well uh, wielded um, stupidly. There is a purpose behind it. There is a permission granted for that sword to be wield wielded. Plus this lovely, beautiful rose at the bottom there. And so I'll just move on to, uh, now we're just going to move on to um, a court card of each suit. So here we have um, one of each court card. Now, none of them are actually the pages of any of the courts, but what I found was none of the pages looked as impressive as any of the others. So um, there aren't any pages here. So we've got two knights, a king and queen. So we're going to uh, have a quick look at the Knight of Wands. 
and she kind of has a uh, Lady Diana Wonder Woman sort of look and feel to her and uh, feet aren't touching the ground and she does have that she does feel like she's a force to be reckoned with and uh, she does have that kind of um, strength to her but not necessarily about phys overcoming someone physically but more of overcoming overcoming someone with strategy so about creativity and that sort of thing then we've got the Queen of Cups as I said none of the um, miners are actually named on the card it's merely the number but I like the Queen of Cups here because she does kind of have that feeling of um, someone who's very chilled out someone who's very loving caring compassionate as you can see she's kind of looking at goldfish there uh, with a nice little cup um, obviously I don't recommend you putting goldfish in wine glasses but um, you're not here for that so you're not for this you're not at this channel for hearing about how to look after fish but uh, yeah there's a nice kind of elegance to her there and uh, you've got a koi carp I think on the by her feet there so she's a woman of the water and there's a nice kind of flowing elegance there now as you can probably see none of these have the engraved bit at uh, any of the engraved parts on the main bit of the card except for the bottom and uh, none of the miners have that because the majors have that cut have that kind of pattern dealt in whilst the miners tend to just have all color i uh, have more color than and uh, so there's less kind of carbon so now we've got the uh, knight of coins and I quite like the knight of coins, uh, is that focused? yeah I quite like the knight of coins in this because while I just love his antler style uh, kind of helmet and he kind of has like a so he has a hammer there so he feels more like a forge master in the rider weight um, you have the knight of coins looking over at a field waiting for his crop to grow whilst this card feels like he's an armor maker so he doesn't need to wait he just needs to work and he needs to know kind of the right ways and the practices and I mean obviously there is probably patience in forging but there's probably more practice rather than patience so and there's a lot of kind and there's with his holding his book there it is kind of um, understanding through education and as I said before the, the antlers just look amazing and so we now go to the king of swords and the king of swords does not look like a bloke I'd want to mess with um, I like how he's was um, he's we no he's also floating so if you let's have a look there so his feet are not touching the ground so none of the court cards actually are touching the ground because they are the court cards and they are higher than us because they have a kind of better understanding of everything really I guess I mean that's the concept but he doesn't seem as cold or vicious as like the standard King of Swords however it does have that feeling of he still has that feeling of sever severity um, still a very logical sort of man rather than anyone you'd kind of lean into and ask for some advice he would probably still give you the advice but kind of roll your eyes as to say well, why are you asking me it's kind of an obvious statement yeah so that's the uh, uh, my selected court cards and now for a little bonus look I can hear what you're saying to yourself you're thinking but blue yes you're charming and handsome and very huggable but what do you mean by a bonus what do you mean by this and by that I mean this card. Now, I am not going to try and read what that uh, read what it is actually called. It's A N A N T. So, being dyslexic, I'm not even going to attempt to try and actually pronounce that correctly. But it is in the book at the end of the majors. Um, in the deck itself, it sits at the very end after the minors. Um, I shall read you the four word description of endless. Exempt, infinite, and cycle, uh, cyclical. See, I can't even do that right. So, what we have here is a proper detail. We have a baby, um, more of a fetus, in an aerobarous state with uh, with a, with a uh, circled snake. 
which is usually the symbol for infinity, the snake eating its own tail. So it kind of has this feel of the world, uh, a combination of the world card and the wheel, as in things will always change, things are always changing, therefore change is a constant for eternity, as it were. Well, and until the eventual heat death of the universe, but that's for a different podcast. That's for a different video, rather. Uh, I probably won't cover. But yes, it's just a nice little bonus card you get. Um, I can't remember, because I ordered these back in... I put my order for these cards back in October of last year, and the first batch weren't dispatched until December of that year, of last year. So it's been a while. So I can't remember if I ordered the bonus card or if the bonus card is this part of the deck. I personally cannot remember and if I'm honest, should have looked up before I decided to do this video. But I was very excited to get these cards done. And as you can see, these cards are beautiful. Now, just before I uh, wrap up, I would like to say that um, I haven't actually done the spreading across the table to see how smooth they are or how smooth they are to shuffle. What I can tell you is that the card itself, the card itself has a kind of fabric sort of feel to it, but the outside does not. So when you actually hold hold them on the side, it kind of feels very, it feels like thick card. So it doesn't have that kind of velvety feel, which I think actually works in its benefit because that way, because as the cards are really quite nice, I would hate to have smudge marks all along the side of the deck. Um, I don't know if I'll actually use these for readings or if I'll just keep them to look at pretty pictures. I know it's more likely. But um, this is my kind of look at the uh, true black tarot. Personally, I wouldn't say these are for beginners. However, if you are, um, once again, intermediary, that's great. I'd recommend these. And if you just want to look at really nice pictures, I'd say go for it as well. However, they are not cheap, and depending on where you live, as I said, I paid seventeen pound four pence um, as part of an import tax. So they cost me quite a bit just for the deck themselves, then for the postage and packing, and then the UK shipping, as I live in London. So um, if you aren't if uh, if it's something if you can't necessarily afford to spend a lot of money on a single deck then i would say look into that depending on where you live it might be different for you for me these wound up being quite expensive however i don't regret that expenditure because it wound up over the stretch of about six months just because of how often they release for any extra details obviously you can check out their website to just look up true black tarot I'm um, watching Google, and um, all the details will be on there. I'm really happy I've got these. These are amazing cards. And uh, now to the outro. As I've said before, I'm really happy I got these cards. I've been waiting ages for them. And they are some of the most beautiful, if not the most beautiful deck of cards I've ever seen. In, in, in fact, I... I don't even know if I'm ever going to see a pack more beautiful than those. Does that mean there won't be? There's no higher beauty than those. And does that mean I'll don't need to get any more? Does is my tarot journey over? Nah, I'll be fine. I'll keep going. There's always other decks out there. In fact, I'm, I'm tired of all this black and white. I'm going to put on a splash of colour. Oh, there you go. That's a bit better. A little bit more colourful. Uh, let's get my hair sorted. Um, I do quite like this. Actually, it doesn't feel like there's enough colour in this. Probably add a splash more. Yeah, there you go. Add that for a nice splash of colour. Got all the colours here. All of them. Just count them. There are seven. But, uh, yeah, I'll tell you what, I'll see you at the next review. You have a good one. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Um, you can also um, press that little bell icon at the bottom next to the subscribe button. So every time I do an upload, you get a message telling you that I uploaded a video. 
Uh, you can also check me out on Twitter and Instagram at Blue6Tarot. And you can also check out my videos here and here uh, to see some of the other stuff I've done. And uh, you have a good day.